Hey guys, welcome back to Digital Decoded. Today's podcast is an interview with Kyle Reeves. Kyle is a Google certified premier partner in the PPC and AdWords space and has over 17 years of experience and expertise to bring to the table. We're going to talk to him today a little bit about his background and some other topics that may be of some value to you if you're in the B2B space. Let's take a look. Hey, Kyle, thanks for joining us today and uh, taking some time out of your busy schedule. Uh, I know this is our second time attempting this interview, which I think will just make it that much better, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, Th thanks for having me today and uh, the other day. <laughs> yeah, no problem. And uh, for everybody else out there, we did an interview. It went great. And I did not capture his audio. So here we are doing it again. But guess what? Second time's a charm. And I think it's going to even be even better. All right, Kyle, well, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, uh, your core services you provide and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I get into um, this whole Google Ads PPC thing kind of circuitously. Um, ultimately, went to school, had a, got a degree in psychology. Um, after a couple of years of that, went back and got an MBA in marketing and fell into uh, an internal marketing role back in 2006 back when you wore many hats, right. um, little SEO, little email. Um, the company was like, oh, we have this Google AdWords thing that the person, you know, you came in sort of replaced had just started, uh, you know, pick a couple of keywords or write some ads, send them to the website, pay 20 cents um, for a visitor. The wild, the wild, wild west of, of uh, Google ads. Yeah, back exactly. You know, yeah. super, super, uh, you know, super affor affordable and, uh, <laughs> broad match uh, ruled everything. Um, so, you know, was there for a few years left, um, you know, went to, went to an agency, um, you know, more design dev, but, you know, as people got websites, they wanted traffic, mm -hmm. um, you know, people would ask about this Google AdWords thing. Um, we, they'd originally started outsourcing it and we decided, Hey, this could be a money maker for the agency. Um, so we sort of started teaching ourselves. You know, there wasn't a lot out there um, back then. You know, some of the famous people like Brad Geddes had, you know, written their book, but you know, there wasn't the the Moz blog or the Search Engine Journal, and you know, all those with a lot of uh, readily available, you know, information and direction and and, and all mm -hmm. that. So. It, it was a bit of it, uh, learn by trial and error and see what works and see what doesn't. Um, and then we, we sort of got lucky and fell into a, like a Google training program. And we supported, you know, the New England states um, teaching AdWords uh, 101, 201, or yeah, 201, 301. Um, so, you know, groups of like 25 to up to 150 local business owners that were trying this google adwords thing mm -hmm. um and they ultimately after sitting through a couple hours of us telling you all the different things you had to pay attention to and do it it wasn't this set it and forget it you know magical marketing yeah. tool um so a lot of them were like hey do you guys do this and you know we basically grew the pvc department from you know a couple of random outsourced accounts to uh, 85 clients, um, on retainer, um, before I ultimately left and took a director role in house. And, you know, as you start picking up clients, freelancing and moonlighting, uh, got to the point where I had almost as much time spent on my side gig as my day job. And, mm -hmm. you know, just makes sense to transition to full time, right? Exactly. So, yeah. so mid 2015, I just, uh, pulled the plug and made the jump and uh you know here's where i am today uh you know full-time consulting freelancing with a a book of clients and uh right on know. well you must you must know what you're doing if you're still still doing it from 2015 that speaks a lot because there's there's been a lot of uh you know entrepreneurs out there that have tried their hands in you know launching their own businesses and it's not as easy as it sounds now, is it? <laughs> no, no, not at all. And it's been a wild ride. You know, Google Google keeps everything interesting between, you know, changing the platform, changing how the campaigns work, cha changing match types, changing how ads, you know, are built to, you know, now they're in the middle of sunsetting, I don't know, 
the third or fourth version of analytics for you know the the cookie list world that we're that we're supposedly yeah yeah into. that's a that's a whole new realm about to come around the corner for us i'm sure it's going to create a lot of uh a lot of headaches and and new learning curves for everybody and how how are you preparing for that what's what's something that you're doing right now uh you know in 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 true google fashion they're you know, still developing the product that they're pushing everybody into. Mm. <laughs> so even the, you know, sort of, they, they're putting the stuff out there, they're telling you you have to be in it. But the transition, you know, even though they have some stuff in place that's supposed to make it more seamless, it, it's it's not all working. Um, you know, even the dashboards themselves are, are, are big changes from, uh, you know, sort of what we're historically used used to. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a lot of chasing down people who focus more on analytics or SEO that spend even more time on, you know, that side of the data and viewing their YouTube videos because a lot of their stuff is even better or more complete than the stuff Google's putting out. Okay, as far as getting you up to speed on what exactly is affecting uh, the role in terms of distribution of the ads, how these things are being, um, you know, pushed out, and the best way to optimize yeah. this stuff. Interesting. And 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 especially on the on the analytics side, you know, totally new, like wh how it works, what it tracks, what the data looks like. It, mm -hmm. It's it's all it's all really different, and you know, a lot of the help docs aren't complete or insightful it's like oh it may do this or it may do that but it doesn't tell you which setting to choose based on that so you you have to either have friends that do code to you know sort of explain the nuances of you know if i check box one or box two right. what, what or you check one and you know you come back two days later and you see what the data is and you're like hmm doesn't seem to be checking tracking anything but let me uh well you must love something about it because you're you, once you master one set of uh you know d data in one set of way of looking at it they're 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 changing it up on you and you're you're having to you know learn a whole new way to do it so that that must be something that part of that you you do enjoy is that is that yeah something? yeah yeah definitely it's i i think you know obviously like i said the, the platform changes um, and, and that keeps things interesting. And then obviously, mm -hmm. as you have different clients in different industries, um, you know, you may run into the same problem for, for two different clients and the solution is often not the same. Mm -hmm. You know, so sometimes it is. And, you know, there, there's bigger learnings that you All can based leverage. based on the audience's behaviors and the competition. The, their available. website, exactly. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot into it that most people don't realize. And, and that kind of rolls into what we were discussing earlier um, about, you know, historically when Google ads first came out and through those years, those early years, um, you know, the, the, the approach was create an ad, shove somebody to a landing page and convert them, right? It was a very mm -hmm. simple architecture in terms of obtaining the traffic and, and, and creating some conversion or MQLs. Um, what, what, what do you think has changed in what people really need to start focusing on today? Yeah, I, I think that there's, there's a lot of it. I think understanding that PPC is, is probably just a piece in your arsenal. Um, and it, it may truly be that person's first touch, um, to, to your brand or your product, mm -hmm. And, you know, that old style landing page of, you know, no navigation. It's like, here, do you want it? No. All right. See you later. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you're losing an opportunity, you know, and I mean, there are places still, don't get me wrong, where, where that still may be the best approach. Um, but in a lot of cases, giving them not a means to escape, but a, a means to explore and go further into your website to, you know, find additional information, um, you know, sort of, set you apart as a as a knowledge leader or a you know a product leader that you truly could solve their problem you know whatever it is be it product or service um so you know keeping that in mind that you know the old days of an 85 percent impression share you like or um bounce rate you're like eh, we didn't get the lead the the this the, the cost per lead's good um and it's great to grab those people at the bottom of your funnel mm -hmm. um you know they'll always convert really well 
but it's that 80% of the traffic that's not, you know, exactly ready to buy today. And depending on how long the buying cycle is in, in your industry, you know, you may be the first touch over a nine month journey. Right, right. So um, really it's, a, it's, it's, it's strategically integrating the PPC into more of the whole buyer's journey, right? Not mm -hmm. trying to shove them down uh, you know, a specific road, like you said, to a landing page with no other links to go anywhere. Um, PPC really needs to be looked at as a way to enhance the full multi-touch attribution model, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, nurturing them through the, the, the different touches and using PPC as a way to help connect those dots. I think that's, that's definitely, you know, the way that we're seeing things as well on our end. Um, and uh, especially now with um, so much of the outbound lead gen really just starting to die off and producing less and less year over year. Um, and we're now rolling into this more of an inbound marketing approach, right? For a lot of, especially for B2B. Now B2C, uh, I could still see a lot of the outbound being uh, very valuable there, but in terms of B2B, that's something that we're seeing on our end as being a big transition to inbound marketing, you know, developing uh, lots of different types of content, whether it's podcasts, video, um, you know, snippets of, of, of an ebook posted to LinkedIn as a slider, uh, mm -hmm. all of these things that are now starting to, you know, create a bigger role in this, this inbound world that we're transi transitioning into. Um, so that's, that's a really good point, though, to, to really just focus on trying to utilize PPC to uh, enhance that that new strategy and start to, like I said earlier, connect those dots uh, between those touch points. Yeah, it's, you know, people searching on your brand, you know, there's always the debate of, do I bid on my, bid on my brand terms? Do I not? Um, you know, that that's probably a podcast in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it's, you got to sort of look at, at the landscape. Are, are, are a lot of your competitors bidding on your brand? It allows you to m maintain that that top position. Um, often, it's fairly inexpensive for you as well. Um, and then there's that old the, the the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. And there's numerous studies out there that show that if if you're showing up in, in the paid spots as well as you know one of the top couple in the organic, the net results are usually greater than you know just paid or just organic showing up. So you sort of get that you know, X factor of like 1.2 or, you know, I forget off the top of my head what the statistic is, but, mm -hmm. you know, it usually when the two are there together, it, it usually performs better than either one singularly. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 content distribution and getting in front of them as, as many times as possible. Um, yeah, all that goes into play with it. So yeah, is there is there anything else you want to add to this interview that you feel that our viewers would uh, you know get some value from? Um, I mean, I can talk PPC all the time, which is yeah. I guess why we're here. But um, I don't know. I think I think a couple of things, you know, with the way everything's moving, and the the machine learning and the AI and a lot of those settings, I would just say. Well, Google pitches it as a great feature of let us get in front of people you don't even know are your customers. I would caution that you, especially as a B2B client, you pretty much know who your customer is. Um, so a lot of these automated settings are, are going off, you know, maybe it's out of industry or out of product family or, you know, you, you just have to pay attention even when you get these set it and forget it type settings mm -hmm. that, you know, if those settings are in everybody's account, everybody's potentially using. <laughs> so now you're letting Google basically control everybody's account. And I, I think that that may be part of that, you know, as you, you said earlier, you're starting to see a tail off of, um, you know, performance across a, a lot of these. And I think some of the, the broadening of let us help you find people you don't even know exist is, 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 you know, LinkedIn does it, um, you know, Microsoft ads does it, Google does it. They start chasing similar personas based on maybe personas that aren't relevant 
mm. to, to 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 the product you're selling, and, and they definitely work a lot better on you know B two C type products that are you know more consumer, because you know someone buying wrenches, you know maybe a truck person or you know they may have hobbies that are mechanically related, but you know if you're a B two B person doing some company research for a product it you know 90 percent of the searches that google's basing how to find you are based on your your personal consumer history and, oh, and that's not a good point yeah and, and not not the fact that one out of every 50 searches you do is for your for your work or for you know the job you're doing so it's it's really tough to hone in uh, on the b2b signals when it's you know really obscured by you know, you searching, what do you want to do for lunch or what do you want to do this weekend? Or, you know, what, what movies are playing, you know, they, mm -hmm. like there's so many consumer signals by the individual work person, you know, that, that into those, their profile. Yeah. That, that, that yeah. those two, two searches, you know, almost, I think go undetected at times. That's a good point. I mean, and people don't just use their business computer for business anymore. There's a lot of work from home, uh, scenarios happening and they're they're doing a lot of their personal searches on the same machine that they're using for work right so now or your device and your kid you know yeah also and you're showing your technical videos on on sesame street and peppa pig <laughs> right. I, I i i had a client yeah. that was like hey we just got this great um google beta that will target all this stuff can you take a look at the results it didn't see, and, and they spent like eight thousand dollars of the ten thousand dollar budget was on YouTube and and you look through and it was all these kids apps oh, because yeah. because it's it's the parents you know device they're searching and then the kids in the car it's like here's your phone and the kid the kids watching you know Peppa Pig on YouTube and like <laughs> you, you just you accidentally yeah. fat finger the ad and now yep there goes 30 cents or 50 cents or, right. or a buck and you know yeah. eight thousand dollars and Wow. You know, a ninety-eight percent bounce is a, rate. That later. is a that is a that is a good topic to be hitting on here. I mean, that's yeah. So now we've got a you know all of our personal um, you know history bleeding into our work history and utilizing these you know automation tools within the ad platform doesn't really understand how to discern between the two. So that's what we're seeing. What we're, that's what we're saying right now. Yeah. Um, that, that's a really good point. And we may have to do another podcast just on that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm not going to take much more of your time today, Kyle. I think this was a great kind of introduction interview, uh, to bring you on. We'd like to do some more, uh, obviously with you, it, we go, we'll go down some rabbit holes together on very specific, you know, things that, uh, you see that will be of some value for people that are, you know, wanting to explore the PPC side of advertising and, uh, you know, how they can do that without obviously wasting $8,000 on uh, Sesame Street, uh, you know, uh, geared um, targeting. Um, but yeah, we, I think this was a great interview and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to having you on again. No, thank you. I Pre appreciate being here and uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Have a good one, Kyle. You too. All right. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you found that interview intriguing and of some value to you. If you have any specific questions you would like to ask Kyle, leave those in the comments section below and we'll do our best to address them. We plan on doing a short podcast every week to kind of go over some very specific uh, items within the PPC arena. So if you have anything in mind you would like us to address or review or go over, leave those below. As always, please subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.